In this episode, we take a look at a unique deck offering from anyone worldwide, the Headlong Into Eternity deck. Give you a chance to win one for yourself and announce the winner of the D.Va playing cards. All that and more coming up next. Branding is such a strong influence on our spending choices. It's astonishing the psychological effect of seeing a logo or a brand name emblazoned on a product can have. Sometimes it even leads us to paying prices that would otherwise seem exorbitant. This, of course, extends to playing cards. Some of the shrewdest deck producers in the business will take what in essence is a standard deck of cards, say one printed by the United States Playing Card Company at a production cost anywhere between two and four dollars. And although it bears little in the way of custom features, actually, in fact, most often they're completely bog standard, they still manage to sell these decks at almost six or seven times the cost. Time and time again, these decks completely sell out, all because the decks carry a name or a logo that's popular with a specific subset of deck culture. Those decks have come to be known as height decks. The deck I'm about to review, the Headlong Into Eternity deck, is technically one of those. However, you'll soon see why it stands apart. Welcome back, guys. I'm The Gentleman Wake, and you're watching the go-to channel for the playing cards enthusiast. If you are new here, we hope the value you get from this episode will compel you to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Make sure to stay all the way to the end of this video for a chance to win a Headlong Into Eternity deck directly from me. There's a lot to unpack here, figuratively and literally. And I'm gonna warn you, we're probably gonna take a few tangents, but it'll be worth it. Without further ado, why don't we take a look at that tuck box. Headlong Into Eternity comes packaged in a premium embossed white matte cardstock tuck case. The design is monochromatic and features an artistic style that might best be categorized as photocopy aesthetic. The front of the tuck box features the back design of the cards, a trippy hypnotic field of concentric circles radiating out from the center of the box. It's an image perfectly at home within an episode of The Twilight Zone. There are some shifting line weights that give the design a sound wave feel, like a radar screen or ripples in a pond. There's only one other small design element to break up the circles, a small rectangular badge with the signature of designer B. Tom Stevenson written within. The same badge will appear on other spots as well as we examine the rest of the deck. The entire design sits within a thick black frame. It's worth noting that the rings are lightly embossed and raised to the touch. The top of the box features the Anyone branding, once again giving the copy machine vibes. There's an entire subgenre of art called Xerox art or xerography. The principal feature, aside from the poorly dithered black and white toner aesthetic, is the manipulation of the copied images, oftentimes through the warping caused by moving the original document on the bed or opening the copy machine lid during the photocopying process. There are elements of this style throughout the Eternity deck, nowhere is that more obvious than on the back of the tuck box. The back of the tuck box features a cardboard pattern that's very much at home within the Anyone Worldwide catalog and in the world of Xerox art. The board seems warped and folded in on itself. Near the bottom is the signature badge once again. One side of the box displays the deck's name, the other features some Japanese language katakana. Using Google Translate on my phone leads to a rather buggy decryption of the foreign text, translated to read pain management. As a quick aside, how cool is this technology? You download an app, point it at a document written in a foreign language, and bam, instant translation. Well, kinda. <laughs> The translated text in this case kind of bounced back and forth between Bane and Pain of the window variety, neither of which makes too much sense, of course. It's almost assuredly Pain, spelled P-A-I-N. The culprit, of course, is Katakana. Unlike traditional Japanese kanji, which have come to represent words and meanings in an almost iconographic style, the Katakana function as phonetic markings often used to write out words borrowed into the Japanese language from other tongues, like the English 
campaign management in this case. Google Translate therefore had a bit of trouble telling the difference between Bain, Pain, and Pain since phonetically they are more or less interchangeable. It's still a very cool technology nonetheless and I'll be using it again in a little bit. The bottom of the box includes the traditional ad copy as well as the Anyone Worldwide logo. The box has no seal. The tuck flap includes a small passage promoting justice and the image of a small sunflower. Pulling the deck out of the box reveals the aforementioned back design, this time sitting within a thin poker style white border. The deck features bicycle standard spot cards with traditional coloration, pip layout, pips and indices. The ace of spades, court cards, jokers and ad cards are a different story altogether. Thumbing through this deck makes me feel like I'm turning the pages of a serial killer's diary like the kind John Doe had in Seven. There's a little bit of pulp to them as well and a little bit of adult magazine in some cases. Certainly some schlock style design borrowed from the grindhouse cinema aesthetic of the 70s and 80s. Who remembers the films of Traumaville and Roger Corman? Comment below if you make sense of any of those references. The combination of all these influences in the do-it-yourself style presentation is firmly rooted in the counterculture world of punk fanzines, which is almost assuredly where this deck gets its inspiration, especially when you consider anyone worldwide's popularity among younger audiences who will definitely find a lot more to relate to in the rebellious undertones of this deck. The Ace of Spades includes a somewhat ironically labeled spade pip in a field of speckled toner ink. The court cards are a completely wild assault on the imagination. The jacks feature oddly constructed collages of disturbed faces. There are small phrases or platitudes printed on some. The Jack of Hearts makes me think of Frankenstein, while the Jack of Clubs is definitely channeling the vampires of 1940s, 1950s era Hollywood. The Queens feature high contrast images of women in suggestive poses, definitely channeling the triple X theater exploitation era of 1980s Times Square. Finally, the kings show off corpse-like figures in vaguely grotesque images that could have been pulled directly from badly photocopied autopsy photos. The deck also includes two custom ad cards and two custom jokers. The first ad card looks like a top-down image of a record on a record player. The second one is another nightmarish face cobbled together from several sources. There's another face, this one seemingly a negative image, on one of the jokers. And the final joker includes a silhouette of a human with several points highlighted on the body. Google Translate had an even harder time deciphering these characters in the live view mode, but the online translation revealed them to be several symptoms of pain associated with the area and body parts referenced by each. All four of these cards once again include the signature badge found on the front and back of the box. Anyone worldwide owes much of their ubiquity to their success within the cardistry circles of the world. In fact, type hashtag anyone worldwide into your Instagram search bar and you'll be flooded with a lot of examples, a grid that will be full of really impressive cardistry moves. But those decks popular with cardists tend to be somewhat simplistic and plain in comparison to this deck. This probably contributed to the slightly lower sales performance of this deck. It actually took an extra 24 hours to sell out. Most anyone worldwide decks sell out pretty much instantly. It stands to reason that handling would be an important factor with this as it is with all decks produced by anyone worldwide. As such, Headlong Into Eternity is printed by the United States Playing Card Company on their premium casino grade stock. The deck fans and pharaohs easily its modern cut. The stock is firm, yet springs and dribbles are smooth and fluid. The back design isn't the flashiest when it comes to flourishing, but some moves, like the pirouette, do work well with the circular design. All in all, it's an interesting addition to my collection with a very unique aesthetic. There's one aspect left to touch on the name. I couldn't find any information anywhere that directly quotes the artist regarding the intent behind the deck, but judging from the pretty morbid imagery and the loftiness of the title and its context, I guess it's pretty much safe to say that this is some kind of commentary on that universal pain of the human experience as we travel down that existential journey. Basically, it's a mind trip. The deck is long sold out, so eBay may be your best bet, but if you want a chance to win a Headlong Into Eternity deck, here's what you have to do. One, like this video. Two, be a subscriber to this channel. And three, well, 
I've hidden a link somewhere in this video. Find it and you'll be able to complete the requirements for entry. Congrats to William Ronsley for winning the Diva Playing Cards deck giveaway. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. A special thanks to my Patreon backers. They keep the mics hot and the cameras rolling around here. There's no better time to be a subscriber to this channel. Click here to subscribe if you haven't already and to watch another video, click here. Thank you so much for watching. I've been The Gentleman Wake. See you next time.